Nancy Bull Borman. She's a PhD student at the University of Minnesota. Uh, she hails from Iowa. She's worked in industry as well. She worked for in 14 years for uh, as an environmental consultant for swine for a swine company um, after completing her master's in undergrad as well. So take it away, Nancy. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, like I said, I am a second year PhD student, and she forgot to mention that I'm actually advised by Dr. Ann Cordes and Dr. Melissa Wilson. So maybe you've heard them speak yet, or you still will, um, the remainder of the meeting. So just a little overview about what I will be discussing, uh, talking about our preparations that we're making for our nationwide manure test database, we are calling Manure DB. Um, we have been working with talking about working with several labs to um, acquire some recent manure data. And we're using that data to compare with Midwest Plan Service and the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers, ASABE, um, manure book value standards. Going to identify some general nutrient trends and then discuss some ideas what we'll have to work on to make um, manure DB user friend and useful. So that's what we're discussing here this morning. I mean, this audience well knows about why manure in this project. I mean, it's organic fertilizer that contains essential plant nutrients. Um, we know it's non-homogenous product we're dealing with, unlike commercial fertilizers. And, but like commercial fertilizers, we do need to be aware of the environmental risks of losing nitrogen and phosphorus to the environment. So a little bit more about our manure DB manure database project. Uh, we're working with the Minnesota Supercomputing Institute to architect this project. Um, we do have our preliminary database framework in place and the import system and a rough website. Uh, we've been working on legal agreements to start actually putting data in and just exciting, we just got two of our first one signs in the last two weeks. And if you wait for Melissa Wilson's talk, following the, in this session, you will hear more details about this. So in the first place, what are even these manure book values used for? You know it's a good practice to take manure samples on your farm so you know what you are working with. But however, this is still handy for developing manure management plans. Um, as Aaron mentioned, I did work in, for a swine business. And one of our things, if someone wanted to build a new building, you obviously didn't have any manure tests to work with and you had to submit a uh, manure management plan for permitting. And a lot of we would have to then look to the book values to show well, how much land do I need to include in my manure management plan. So that is something that, that we would use um, to look at for these book values. Um, also designing manure storages, uh, establishing best management practices for land, land application, and then also modeling nutrient cycling and gas emissions. All right, so as mentioned previously, uh, the two different book values that I'm looking at today are manure ca characteristics by Midwest Plan Service. That was published back in 2004. And then manure production and characteristics standard by ASABE back in 2005. So as you can see, those are already starting to be almost coming on 15, 20 years old already. And I just pulled this out of the ASABE data just to look at where they were getting their numbers from. And I mean, some of this, you know, is you know, coming from 1999, 2000 data. You could see some of these, how many samples they, they came up with, like layer hens, 48, you know, 95 broilers. And you'd have to dig a little further too to see some of those dates. But no, like some of these are for sure over 20 years old, if not. So in this project, uh, Melissa and Aaron worked with a few labs. We contacted five of them to send us some, some data they had from the last 10 years. Um, between 2012 and 2021, not all five years has all, not all five labs sent us for that whole time span, but a good majority of that time span. We were able to divide these samples between liquid and solid, and then between four general livestock groups, beef, dairy, poultry, and swine, from how they were labeled, to try to compare the best we could with what just what they had and they, what they gave us. And I guess a big key thing here, we got over 100,000 samples, so that's big. 
so we compared these lab results and book values all had various unit types. So we converted these into either um, pounds of nutrient per ton for the solid manure or um, pounds of the nutrient per thousand gallons um, for the liquid to just try to standardize it so we could compare that way. And then we could use the medians uh, for total nitrogen, ammonia, and P2O5 and K2O analyses. And that helped us like not get skewed at all by picking those, those median values. And then like I said, it's hard because we're getting all this bulk data for this part. We didn't really have much differentiation between the housing, manure storage, and age for the most part between them. So, I mean, that's something to keep in mind. We didn't have that great detail. And I'll go over these in a few more slides of showing some numbers. Uh, but for the liquid manure trends, uh, compared to the book values, it kind of just made this chart showing, did they seem to be going up? Did they seem to be going down? Or was it kind of inconclusive um, for what, what we could see? So in the liquid manure, uh, seemed like as far as nitrogen, seemed like the dairy was maybe trending down a little bit. Um, the phosphorus was trending down in swine and dairy, and perhaps the potassium was maybe trending up in swine and poultry. So just to go into a little bit more detail on this. So here, this is what Midwest Plant Service has. This has the ASABE, what they had for numbers. And then this is an average of three labs from the Midwest in between, and then one more Eastern US lab. So this is where, where our numbers, and you can see here their upper 20s, low 30s, and what we have, we're kind of a little bit lower. So again, we don't have the housing changes, uh, but you know, potentially something to look at more as we find out some more details. So those uh, for phosphorus, again, these numbers you can see are in the teens for Midwest Plan Service and ASABE and for all of our samples, you know, they were less than 10, they were nine. So you can see that that seemed to be trending down. For numbers, the, the average of our three Midwest labs, that's over 10,000 samples ran, run and the Eastern lab had over 500. So it's a good cross section. Swine liquid pea, there's a lot more detail in these standard Midwest plant service had a whole variety and ASABE did as well. But the Midwestern labs averaged around 22, the Eastern lab 10, and then the Southeast lab, which this one did say it was from Lagoon, which is a lot lower. So and just in my experience, this was something I noticed a lot um, working in the swine industry. The P values was really different what we saw from book values, but most likely from the inclusion of phytase in the feed, making it more efficient for the animals so there was less um, P excreted. Uh, for potassium, we had for our, so here again, Midwest Plan Service numbers, ASABE numbers. See our, our average of the Midwestern labs was 32. And, for, and this was over 39,000 samples we had from the Midwestern labs in that number. Um, the Eastern US lab and then the lagoon number was Obviously, a lot less. Now, there weren't as many liquid poultry numbers, but uh, just interesting. I mean, that was all low, lower than what Midwest Plan Service had for, for that number. So, and for K, it was uh, higher than all the Midwest Plan numbers. So, and not as prominent, but an interesting trend. So, now we'll look at solid manure numbers. And here we had a little bit, a little bit different for total N. Um, we had positive trends we saw on swine, beef, and poultry. Um, positive in, for P two O five and swine and beef, and then across the board for K, uh, across all of the four groups. And I'll start with the swine solid nitrogen. And for this one, we had for the three Midwestern labs, we had about three hundred over 350 samples in the Eastern lab, 75. So you know, not as many as the liquid, but that makes sense too. So 16 we had for our Midwestern labs and 18 for our Eastern labs. So they were you know, equal or higher to what was um, in, for Midwestern, Midwest plan service. For the solid phosphorus, uh, this is what Midwest Plan Service had for all these different values, and our Midwestern labs and Eastern lab were quite a bit higher. For our solid potassium, Midwest Plan Service, fours and fives, and we had seven or, and nine for our averages. Lower numbers, but still 
higher across the board for the averages. Um, for poultry solid nitrogen, you know, in the 40, 30s and 40s for Midwest Plant Service, ASABE had a, you know, 30s, 40s, broiler litter was higher. Um, but they were both in the 50s for what we had for our three Midwestern labs and one Eastern lab. So we had over 9,000 samples for the three labs and over 1,000 samples for that Eastern US lab. For the solid K, 30s, 20s, we had 37 for the three Midwestern labs and 40 for the Eastern labs. So that was higher than all those standards. And I guess some of this too, uh, talking about, you know, a lot of this could be diet, as we said, it could be water conservation, housing changes, bedding changes, manure storage situations. So all kinds of different factors that could have changed, you know, in the last 20 years too, since a lot of these samples were taken. Um, things we have learned, uh, standardizing how we bring the data from the labs into our database is going to be a key thing. And we you know, went back and forth on definitions. How do we define species and having different layers, like there's poultry, but then we also have, you know, could it be turkey or broiler or layer, you know, beef and the different ages or, you know, swine, farrow and nursery, finisher and different housing and different different ways you can do it and trying to define those categories if they're available on the forums. You know, trying to be able, can we accept all this data and then how can we bring it in in a uniform way so we can compare it? Uh, and like, again, having the units, we've kind of made a standardized how we'd like to have it, but we know we'll probably have to have some sort of a unit conversion system, you know, again, so we can standardize that. So yeah, we said all these things can, can affect these samples. So future plans, like you said, just trying to get these things standardized as much as we can. We have unit conversion mechanism. Um, we're working to recruit more laboratories to participate, you know, and get more data sets now that we can finally put this in. Because what I did was just, you know, preliminary looking at data. It wasn't actually in our database we've created. Um, and compare, you know, compare and analyze more data as we get it. And we're trying to going to be designing our Minerva DB with statistical and data visualization features for future public use. Just to summarize it up, our Minerva DB construction is underway. So then Melissa will give some more details on this. Um, our preliminary lab data did show there have been tra some trends changing since these published book values have happened. Um, and just, you know, the more detail we have can make, you know, better comparisons and better output. So like, like most things, the better data going in, the better, um, output you can coming out. So for more information, um, we do have a website, but it's not public yes, but it will be manuredb.umn.edu. So that should be coming coming soon. Um, you can check out more of our, our lab websites for the Wilson and Cordes labs. Uh, you can follow Melissa or I on Twitter if you're so interested. And yeah, I'd like to acknowledge um, Melissa Wilson and Aaron Cordes. Um, also Dr. Kevin Yanni, extension engineer at U of M. Larry Gunderson at the Minnesota Department of Ag, and Tom Prather and Dr. Kevin Silverstein at the Minnesota Supercomputing Institute. So thank you very much.